Hello and welcome to the 17th part in this series of Program HS Engine in C. So, this video we're going to quickly make a function to print the board to the screen finally, setting up a few positions. But before we do that, we've got little embarrassing spot the mistake that I need to uh, tell you about, and that is in the hash keys file. In not in the hash keys, sorry, where are we? In the init file of the program. You remember this macro to generate a random 64 number. I had a plus in here when I should have actually had the pipe to or all of the bits together rather than adding the numbers together. I don't know why I did that because that shifts all of the bits too far and we end up actually with a zero as the result of all these numbers here rather than a genuine random 64 number. So I'm sorry about that but you need to correct the code here or if you've downloaded it you've already got it. Put a pipe rather than a plus into this macro here which I spotted when I was preparing for this video earlier. So sorry about that. Okay, in this video then I've added a file called data.c and I've also added data.c to the make file, which I'm going to close now for a bit of space. Hash keys we don't need either, so I'm going to close that. And in it we don't need either, so I'm going to close that. Defs vice board we need. Good. Okay, so let's have a look at creating a function to print the board. Ah, and one more thing I've done, sorry, before we carry on with that is in parse fen I've taken the underscore out of the name inside the definition in board.c and also the corresponding definition inside defs.h because I don't like underscores in function names and I'd left one in for whatever reason. Okay, so we're going to go back down to the bottom of board.c and we're going to print board and we're going to take in a constant pointer to a position which we're then going to print out. This is going to be a fairly simple function to understand. Again, I've got this already uh, laid out and defined. And once we've done our definition here, let's just save this and put the definition into defs.h as next turn because we'll be using it all over the place in the program later on. And now we're going to need a little bit of data to deal with this and I've already prepared the code here to put in so that I don't take too long again in this video. But essentially I've de de defined four arrays here. Piece character, side character, rank character and file car in this way. And these are simply going to then be indexed using the corresponding integer to be able to print the piece, side and rank and file. And the corresponding arrays filled in inside data.c then look like this, and I'll just leave that there for a couple of moments. So basically, we'll index our piece car according to the number that we've got, the constant number, running up to a king, and we've got a dot for empty, we've got a dash for both colours together, and the rank, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H for the file. So that should be fairly self-explanatory, and there's nothing really complicated in there. So, when it comes to actually printing out the board, we have a couple of loops for files and ranks. I'll do this stage by stage. So first of all, some variable definitions, square file, rank and piece, which we'll be using in our loops. Then just print to make it try and look nice, game board. And now basically we start on the eighth rank, because remember we want to look at the board with the first rank on the bottom. That's the normal way that everybody looks at it. Descending a rank at a time. And each time, we start a new rank, I'm printing on the left hand side the rank number and leaving a couple of spaces and adding a 1 of course because rank 1 for us is a naught because we use zero indexing but when we actually see the board it's called rank 1 so we'll print a 1. And then inside this obviously I step through the file from file A to file H on the rank, this should be fairly easy to, to understand. I get the square index we're on from the file and the rank and then I get the piece using this square index from our board and I simply with a width of specify of 3 print this piece character using the array we've just added in data here. So not very complicated at all. Once I've finished the rank and then print a new line to go to the next one and so on. Then below that what I want to do is print the files, letters as well, just so that it's easier to reference the squares we're looking at. I mean, later on when you've done a lot of chess programming you'll know them off by heart anyway. But again, just a loop, 
there's a quicker way of doing this, but it doesn't matter for this now. Another loop, just increasing across the bottom of the files, leaving the gap here so that we line up correctly, and again with a width of 3. Putting A plus the file, so that's yet again this using the ASCII number sort of trick there that I've told you because we know that A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H and the characters are one number after another and printing a new line. And the last thing we're going to do is print a couple of the variables that are also set on our board. We're going to print the side character. Then we're going to print the ampersand square, and for now we're just going to print it brutally as a decimal rather than printing the square out as characters because I haven't written a function yet to actually print a square, and it's not really necessary yet. It's a bit of a, a ball ache and not set necessary. I want to move on to other things. So we print the ampersand square in this way simply as a decimal because we can quickly, using the spreadsheet reference, using this, which square is which. The next thing we want to do is print the castle permission, which looks like a big horrible thing but it isn't simply the four characters and all I've got here is for each character each placeholder I'm simply saying with a bitwise and I suppose I could make things a bit easier to read and put a space in here but if our castle permission ends with the bit representing the specified castle permission here then print the corresponding letter, sorry I'm just adding spaces in here so it's a bit easier to read, I have a, a habit of squashing everything up with things like this. So it's just a conditional, so here we would say if uh, bitwise and sort of white king castling bit, which I think is a 1, is not is non-zero, then put a big K, otherwise put a dash, and so on. And last but not least, we're going to print our hash key for the position, our position key, and here remember it's an unsigned long long so an ll and i want this in capital letters hexadecimal format because i find that easier to read and a position key so that's all there is to it for printing the board so now what i've done is i've gone to wikipedia and i've gone to the forsyth edwards notation page which you can see here and I've taken these positions, the start position, we already have the starting position here, has start FEN. I've taken these three positions after E4, C5, Knight, F3, and I've put those at the top of vice.c just for this video and defined them as FEM1, FEN2, and FEN3 inside speech marks in this way. And then inside main, I've simply declared a board or an array of boards, so pointers to a board structure, but only one of them, because we only need one of them. And I've called pass FEN with the starting position and printing the board. And then I've called FEN1, FEN2, and FEN3, just so we can have a look in the program at how well we're printing the board and saved all that. So once you've got all that done, we can then go and make our code and it compiles thank goodness and then run vice and let's see what we have if I scroll back up to the top so the first thing that's happened is you can see it's printed out our game board with our ranks and files labeled correctly the side to move is white the omniscient square is 99 and that's correct because that corresponds to our definition of no square I think or off, yeah, of no square. 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, so that's correct because on percent square none is set. Castling permission is all castling permissions available, and we have here our long looking hash key representing this position. Then after 1e4, the square e3 should now be set as non percent square, and side to move is black. The position key is changed, which is a good sign, and I'll just check that square 45 in, is indeed. E3, and you can see that it is E3, 45 here, good. So it's interpreting the ampersand square correctly. And we've got C5, side to move is now white, because C5 has been played by black. Ampersand square is now 73, so that should be square C6, and indeed it is. And last but not least, knight f3, so the on pass on square is reset back to 99, no square, good, still got the castling permissions. 
and black is now to move. So everything's looking all right. So that's good. We know that our setting up passing of an FEN position is working and we're printing our game board with a few of the variables to the screen. Good, so that's it for this video. Uh, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.